Hi, I'm Dr. Jerry Jackson, out with the wild things. On my first day of high school biology, my teacher walked into the classroom and wrote, structure is for function on the blackboard. That mantra for our course became a lifelong guide for my studies of the living world. Why, for example, does a woodpecker have a long, worm-like tongue that is hard and barbed at the tip? The why is obvious. The woodpecker's long, slender tongue is used to probe into tunnels of termites, ants, and beetles in search of food. But how does it use that tongue? Conventional wisdom and numerous textbooks have described the hard, barbed tip of a woodpecker's tongue as a spear, suggesting that a woodpecker uses its tongue to impale its prey. It doesn't. How would a woodpecker swallow an insect impaled on the barbed tip of its tongue? Instead, the proper analogy for a woodpecker's tongue is a rake. The woodpecker's tongue, coated with sticky saliva, moves past insects, and as the bird withdraws its tongue, the barbs rake in its next meal. Woodpeckers make their living on tree surfaces, easily hitching straight up a tree trunk, probing crevices for insects or digging for hidden food, or excavating a nest cavity. How can they move so easily on a tree trunk? A woodpecker's tail serves as a prop and a spring to aid their movement upward. But it's the woodpecker's long toes and strongly curved claws that allow it to cling to vertical tree surfaces. Each claw is almost a perfect semicircle, and the tip of each claw is sharply pointed. When I was a kid, an ice man came through the neighborhood to deliver 40-pound blocks of ice for ice boxes. He handled the ice with tongs similar in construction to a pair of scissors, but with two sharply pointed semicircles of steel where the blades would be. All it took to secure a firm grip on the slippery ice was to open the tongs and grab the ice with the pointed tips. Because of the curvature of the tongs, the tips met the ice at right angles, providing a grip that did not allow the ice to slip. Thus it is with a woodpecker's claws. The tips meet the bark at right angles, and provide the woodpecker with a firm grip. A woodpecker's movement up a tree is a jerky stop and start. We say that it hitches up the tree. During each pause in movement, the woodpecker leans back on its tail as if it were a stool, and the tip of the tail is held against the tree surface. The woodpecker's tail is more than just a stool, however. It serves with the bird's two legs to form a tripod-like steady base for the bird's activities. It also serves as a spring, aiding in the bird's movements. Each time the woodpecker puts weight on it, the strong, flexible tail feather spring is cocked. And when the woodpecker leans forward to peck or to move upward, the energy in the cocked spring helps propel it. A woodpecker's tail feathers are stiff and almost always black. The black pigment adds strength to the feathers, reducing wear from contact with rough tree surfaces. A woodpecker has to mold its tail feathers and grow new ones each year, but this is done in a sequence that assures the bird will always have enough strong feathers to carry on its tree trunk business. Among the most conspicuous of a woodpecker's tools is its bill, a straight, strong structure that allows the bird to excavate a nest cavity, remove insects hidden in wood, and hammer out loud reverberating signals to other woodpeckers. Bill's size and shape vary with the size for the woodpecker and with its food habits. The heavy, more than three inch long bill of an ivory-billed woodpecker was used to extract three inch long, half inch diameter beetle larvae from beneath the bark of recently dead trees. Its bill was flattened at the tip, much like a carpenter's chisel, and it was used like a carpenter's chisel. The tiny downy woodpecker has a bill that is less than an inch long. Its bill is sharply pointed and used like a dental pick or a pair of delicate forceps to remove insects from shallow crevices. The northern flicker has a longer, slightly curved bill, perfect for its ground feeding habit of probing into ant mounds. The red-headed woodpecker has a bill that is relatively broader than that of other woodpeckers, perfect for capturing the flying insects that it feeds on in open habitats. Each woodpecker species differs in body size, bill size, and in colors and patterns of their feathers. All have stiff black tail feathers, resistant to wear from contact with abrasive tree surfaces. 
Many have black and white patterns on wing and body feathers. These help woodpeckers blend in with the dappled light filtering through leaves of trees. Many woodpeckers have a white to gray breast that reflects light into crevices as they hunt for food. The black chest stripe of a flicker disrupts its outline in the open habitats it occupies, making it more difficult for potential predators to see. All woodpeckers have short, stiff, usually light-colored feathers that cover their nostrils, filtering out chips and dust resulting from excavations. Most male woodpeckers have a patch of red on the head, feathers that can be raised and seen even if the woodpecker is perched in a cavity entrance. Extent or lack of red allows woodpeckers to quickly recognize a potential competitor or mate. Both male and female red-headed woodpeckers, however, have a completely red head. To woodpeckers, red is a macho color. The more red, the more intimidating a woodpecker is to other males, giving a pair of red-headed woodpeckers a competitive advantage in nest cavity disputes with other species. With the Wild Things is produced at the Whitaker Center and the College of Arts and Sciences at Florida Gulf Coast University. For the Wild Things, I'm Dr. Jerry Jackson.